In late 1777, the British Redcoats hoped to crush the American fighting forces once and for all. The British were really worried foreign powers like France could join the war. We needed to take New York conclusively and keep the pesky French from joining the war. So the plan was to send a strong army down the Lake Champlain route from Canada into the heart of the rebellious American colonies and essentially isolating New England. The British planned to have three armies converge at Albany, New York. The British believed that taking control of Albany and the rest of the Hudson Valley would effectively cut off and ruling New England. General John Burgoyne began marching down the Hudson Valley from Canada in the summer of 1777. Along the way, Burgoyne captured Fort Ticonderoga in July. Lieutenant Colonel St. Ledger started traveling east across the Mohawk Valley, but was stopped in his tracks in conflicts with local forces and Benedict Arnold. General Howell was supposed to march north to support Burgoyne, but he was tied up in his campaign to capture Philadelphia. At the end of the day, Burgoyne was alone without reinforcements to take on the American forces. And my men under General Horatio Gates were waiting for General Burgoyne's army. We weren't going to miss anything. There were actually two battles of Saratoga, 18 days apart. The first was known as the Battle of Freeman's Farm. On September 19th, some of my troops got involved with part of General Gates' army near the abandoned farm of John Freeman. Neither side was able to gain the upper hand until some Hessian auxiliary troops came late in the day and gave the British the advantage, forcing the Continental Army to pull back. Even so, those pesky British regulars couldn't continue to push to Albany like they wanted to, because we had inflicted twice as many casualties on them. So the result was a British win at Freeman's farm, not necessarily a good omen for Gates' troops. I knew my numbers were down, so I didn't want to stay put and wait for reinforcements to arrive. Unfortunately, Gates had the same idea and ended up amassing over 13,000 men in the next several weeks. We were fed up waiting for reinforcements from New York, so I decided to spring a surprise attack. On October 7th, General Burgoyne tried to attack the Continental Army's left flank near Bemis Heights, just south of Saratoga. But the Americans successfully defended the attack and broke his army. The battle became known as the Second Battle of Saratoga, or the Battle of Bemis Heights. Even Benedict Arnold, who would later become a traitor to the Americans, played a significant role in defeating us. During the Battle of Bemis Heights, he ignored Gates' order and led an assault on horseback. Did you know that traitor Benedict Arnold played important roles in early American wins in the Revolution? In fact, Arnold resigned his army commission in July 1777, but Washington refused it and sent him north to serve under Gates. Poor Arnold never felt appreciated by his country and later turned a traitor, joining the British. Old Burgoyne and his men tried to escape, but the cold weather and heavy rain slowed them down. They had to dig in to prepare to defend themselves, but my man Gates and his soldiers had the upper hand. They surrounded Burgoyne's army, forcing them to surrender. And it was a good thing, because back in Pennsylvania, the Continental Army serving under me had unfortunately suffered a big fat defeat at the Battle of Brandywine, which led to the British occupation of Philadelphia a couple weeks later. In addition to offensive actions taken by the Continental Army, British mishaps and delays forced Burgoyne's troops to fight Gates's fast-growing army alone, which greatly diminished any possibility of a final British win. I negotiated with the Americans for a week before I finally capitulated. Oh, it was a glorious sight to see the haughty Brits march out and surrender to the Continental Army, which they had despised. The Battle of Saratoga, or both of them if you want to be precise, was a huge success for the Americans, prompting France and other foreign powers to join the Americans in the revolution to fight against the British.